Good evening from Israel. Welcome to another Middle East Forum webinar. Tonight, we have a very special webinar with a very special guest, a long standing friend of the Middle East Forum, Itamar Marcus. Uh, tonight's webinar will be Rejectionism in Palestinian Children's Education. How influential is it? A little bit about our speaker, Itamar Marcus, founder and director of Palestinian Media Watch, writes on Palestinian Authority Education, Ideology and Media. He has presented PMW's findings to government officials, parliamentarians, and academics around the world. He has a BA from CCNY and an MA from NYU. Just uh, to let everyone know, uh, Itamar will speak for around 15 minutes, and then we'll have a, a time for questions, about 15 minutes for questions. So if you have any questions, please type them in. Uh, you can type them in during Itamar's uh, presentation uh, itself. Um, and we will try and get to as many as possible during the Q&A in the second half of this webinar. And with that, Itamar, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ashley, and uh, thank you to the Middle East Forum for, for inviting me to make this presentation. I'm just going to switch here to share screen. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. So the, the title for today's presentation was uh, focusing on the connection between uh, what the Palestinian Authority educates their children and Palestinian and, and the impact that it has on Palestinian children. Uh, so I really played with that title and, and, and basically came up with a, a sort of a, a real challenge. How does the Palestinian Authority turn good children into terrorists? And and I ask this question because we see in Palestinian society that there are so many children involved in, in terror. Uh, the overwhelming majority of Palestinian society supports terror. Uh, it really goes beyond children. How did the Palestinian Authority succeed in turning good people into terror supporters and terrorists? Uh, every society has fringe, but Palestinian society has 70, 80% or more of the people supporting terror. How did this happen? We can't say that they're all bad people. How do they turn good people? So the answer is there, there are a number of messages that the Palestinian Authority gives to their people um, and to their children that makes them think that it's the right thing and the moral thing to do to fight and attack Israelis. Uh, and what I want to show you today is the link between, between the Palestinian Authority messages to its people uh, and, the, and to its children and the actual uh, output by the children. So I, I've, to I've chosen five messages here, uh, and I'm gonna show you the input, how the Palestinian Authority teaches these messages to kids and the output, how the children respond. First message being that Israel has no right to exist. Israel will be destroyed. Second is that all Jews will be expelled from Palestine. Third is that they have a right to violence and terror. Uh, finally, that they should seek martyrdom for Allah, and, and, and beyond that, that martyrs for Allah have a reward of 72 dark-eyed maidens, dark-eyed virgins in paradise. All these are messages that the PA gives to their people, and, and when people see this, they get horrified. What I want to show you today is the, how the messages put into the power, the input into the kids, and the output as well. So first of all, this is the message, uh, the first one, and it's so critical for, obviously, for everything. Israel has no right to, to exist, and Israel will inevitably be destroyed. This is the Palestinian Authority message. How do they teach it to their people? So this, the first place I'm going to show is a source from uh, Fatah's Wide Magazine for Children. BMW just did a, a very long report on this magazine. We went back eight years and studied all the education. This is Fatah's Education for Children Age 6 to 15. Um, it's given out uh, as a magazine in the schools and summer camps and, and, and programs around the whole uh, around the whole country, and you get a great sense of their whole ideology here. Now, I want to. The first thing is denying Israel's right to exist, and and, and listen to this language here. It starts with justification for rejecting UN resolution partition resolution. This is what they teach their kids. November 1947, the UN General Assembly passed the partition resolution a state for Jews and a state for Palestinian people. Palestine has belonged to the Palestinians for thousands of years. Therefore, the Palestinian people rejected this UN resolution that gives rights to our land and our homeland to foreigners. 
who came from all ends of the earth, foreigners who did not know Palestine, did not live in it, neither them nor their fathers and forefathers. This is fundamental PA ideology as it goes to kids and it goes to adults. The Jews have no history in the land. You heard this, uh, whereas the Palestinians have thousands of years of history. You heard this from Mahmoud Abbas um, and the UN. Uh, all of his messages are messages that are not just a, an 87-year-old dictator uh, rambling at the UN. These are messages that the next generation is being brought on, brought up by. Much, much worse than just what, uh, just what he was saying. So this is the fundamental of all of Palestinian ideology. They have a history. They have the right to the land. Israel has no right to the land. Now, once they've erased Israel's history, they go through a replacement ideology where everything that they say happened, everything that actually happened to the Jews, they say happened to them. So in that same educational magazine, this is what they teach. Palestine underwent dozens of invasions by the Babylonians, the Persians, the Sumerians, the Assyrians, the Hyksos, the Hittites, the Pharaohs, and the Hebrews, afterwards the Greeks and the Romans. So all of Jewish history is erased, and then they put in Palestinian for the history, uh, except, of course, for the Hebrews. So that everything that happened to us, they say, actually happened to them. And the kids grow up with this belief. The kids grow up with this belief. We have this rich history. Those Jews have no history here. They don't have any rights to any of the land. I'm going to give you an incredible example in this magazine, just to show you to what extent they go in this. And it's included also in demonization. They teach here, uh, the shekel is a Palestinian currency and not an Israeli currency. They stole our currency, stole our clothing, our falafel, our hummus. And before that, they stole our land and our homeland. And then they say, pay attention to the picture of the ancient Canaanite shekel. They show the kids this picture, which they claim is an ancient Canaanite shekel. And they say, it has the same picture as the new Israeli shekel. You see, this over here is the ancient Canaanite, which is, of course, why Israel used it. And then they say, well, they say it's Canaanite, not, not, and they say thieves, aren't they? So because we used a shekel, an ancient Hebrew shekel, they say we're thieves. The irony is they showed this picture over here. Now look at this text over here on the, on the shekel. What does it say here? It actually has these letters, Yehud, Judea. So they actually showed a shekel with the word Judea, and they claimed it was a Palestinian shekel. So this is all the, now, this leads to the goal. Palestinian goal is to liberate Palestine that was stolen. There's no invader who invaded this land and did not leave it defeated in the end. That's what will happen to the Zionist invaders. These are the messages coming to the kids. Israel is destined to definitely be destroyed. Palestine, the entire land is ours from the river to the sea. This is the Ministry of Education of the Palestinian Authority. So these are the messages that come through. Now, what's the output? I'll just give you a couple of examples how kids talk on TV, how they literally believe these messages that Israel are foreigners with no homeland and came and stole their homeland. Everything is theirs, and the kids really, really believe this. And of course, when kids make maps, this is exactly what the children's map. Now, the message, all Jews would be expelled. This is from the same magazine for children. What do they teach? Algeria's experience. Uh, Algeria was under French colonialism, and they say at the end, all the French left Algeria. Algeria's experience assures us that the Jewish settlers in Palestine will disappear in the end. And this, by the way, they put in red in their original. All the Jewish settlers in Palestine, every Jew in, in Israel is going to be gone. That's what they teach their kids. And this is the output. Palestinian kids speak on TV. We will liberate our land. It won't remain at all. Not a single settler, Israeli or Jew, will remain in our land. We will liberate Palestine. Again, input and output, the same messages. Right to violence and terror, to liberate the stolen homeland. Input, Palestinians are taught, the kids are taught. They have a right, this is the same wide magazine. We have a right to wage armed struggle. Uh, Palestine will only, liberation of Palestine will only be achieved through armed struggle. 
Uh, they have the Fatah is an armed revolutionary movement whose goal is liberating Palestine from the thieving Zionist entity and restoring its right to the owners who own the right. It's all about right. They're the owners with the rights, excuse me, the owners with the rights, and therefore they have the right to wage armed struggle. This is what the kids grew up in. The Palestinian Authority says we just want our rights. People think, okay, what are their rights? They want Judea, Samaria, West Bank. No, they're telling their people their rights are to every bit of Israel, and they have a right to wage armed struggle, meaning terror, in order to achieve it. They also teach the kids by role modeling. Uh, there are 31 schools named after terrorists. This is the front of a girls' school. They have a plaque here honoring 17-year-old girl suicide bomber. Girls are 17 year old, 18 year old, and every day they walk into school and see the name of a 17 year old suicide bomber. Uh, these are the 12 children who were killed by Dalal Mugrabi in a bus hijacking. This is the bus she hijacked. In addition, 25 adults were killed, six schools named after Dalal Mugrabi. These are all some of the ways that they input to kids uh, about violence. Uh, and this year, during the summer, we saw 100 pictures of kids holding. AK-47 assault rifles uh, during their summer camp this year. Um, this was a government official Fatah summer camp for kids. And the kids at this age, look at them, what's he about 10, 11, maybe 12? They're all carrying AK-47 rifles. Uh, and they all posed for the same picture, which all appeared on the Facebook page. So this is the way, the, the input to the kids. Now, what's the output for the kids? I just wanna show you the ages of Palestinian terrorists who were killed just in 2023. There are 21 names there, 17, 15, 16, 14, 17, 16. Look at the 17, 14, 17, uh, 15, 14. Uh, it's unbelievable how many young kids are involved in terror. Some of them had rifles, some of them threw Molotov cocktails. All of these involved in violence and terror and were killed. There were many, many times this number who were involved in violence and terror who weren't killed because uh, Israel is particularly careful with kids. These are how many were killed just since the beginning of the year. And look at look at the ages. And of course, we've had numerous terrorist murderers uh, who were teenagers aged 15, 16, 17, 17. All of these people murdered, uh, murdered Israelis in, in recent years. Here's a picture of a, an Israeli soldier who was stabbed by a 17-year-old boy. And the article in the paper was, uh, after he was shot, after he stabbed the Israeli soldier in the back, the martyr is an outstanding high school student in the science track. That's the point. They're good kids. He's an outstanding student. He's not a problem student, yet he felt it was the right thing to do to go out and stab an Israeli. Uh, you hear all the time about the kids, the Palestinian children who are being killed. This is a 15-year-old who was killed this year, November, uh, I'm sorry, at the end in November, a few months ago. He doesn't look like a 15-year-old. He certainly doesn't, isn't playing soccer and, and basketball like a 15-year-old. Here's a 14-year-old who died uh, two months ago. Um, this is what happens. This is the output for these kids. They all believe that this is what they should be doing. Now, we get to martyrdom for Allah. And this is one of the real shocking things. Palestinian Authority <clears throat> has been teaching the kids that they should also seek martyrdom for Allah. And I want to show you some of this because this is the most shocking thing that's happening this year. What we're finding is that so many of those kids who were killed this year went out not so much to kill Israelis, but they wanted to be killed. And this, I'm going to show you how this happened. So first of all, we've got the education again. This is the same uh, educational magazine. Life and the children are a sacrifice for your sake, Palestine. Oh, my most precious. So children who are six and seven and 10 years old are learning. Palestine is my entire life. Life and children are a sacrifice for you. This is what they're growing up on. Now, this was on Palestinian. This is on Fatah's Facebook page. The worst message you could possibly give to children is that they're really just ammunition. أحمل الهدية نظر إليها فإذا بها بندقية صاح بأعلى صوته يا أمي يا أمي ما هذه أهذه هي الهدية ضمته إليها واحتضنته بيديها وقالت يا بني لم نخلق للسعادة 
فأنت في نظري مشروع للشهادة فالقدس لنا وسلاحنا إسلامنا Okay, our weapon is Islam and our ammunition is our children. Fatah saw this and they put this on their Facebook page teaching their 300,000 followers that children have no value in themselves. They're destined for martyrdom because all they are is ammunition. The worst message you can tell a child, you are nothing. You are a means to another goal and you don't have any rights to anything. You're supposed to die because you're just ammunition. This is fatah to, to their children. In summer camp this year, we had children this age, six, seven-year-olds, we will die and Palestine will live. Uh, we had summer camp this year, they were playing songs to children. If you feel death approaching, make sure it won't be a normal death, meaning you have to be a martyr. Don't dare die as a normal death. That's what kids are being taught in Palestinian summer camps. And even girls, look at what girls were chanting this summer. Young girls also chanting about going to Shahada. Now, uh, here's the output, and this is the, the real shocking thing. Like I said to you, kids are going out for the sole purpose of dying. Listen to a couple of mothers describe why their children went out to die. Every child wants to be a martyr. Every young boy wants to be a martyr. That's the message that parents are giving on TV after the children become martyrs. He did it because he wanted. Uh, here's another example. This mother said, the boy said, there's something more important than high school matriculation. Let me die as a martyr. And then she says, Allah chose him. He wanted it. It's more important than school. That's what he was taught. Uh, now, martyrs for Allah received the 72. What are the, what are the kids being motivated by? Lots of things, honor from their friends, but they're also being motivated by this desire to get the 72 card maidens in paradise. How do we know? First of all, let's look at the input. This is a religious leader just a few weeks ago, uh, months ago, two months ago on TV. He talks about the rewards they get the dark-eyed virgins. Now look at this video at a funeral of a young man. Um, this is on TV at the funeral. And during the funeral, they played in the background on TV this song. Accompanied the handsome groom in a wedding procession. Did you hear the music? It's exciting. It's happy. It's wedding music. It's not mourning music. So during the guy's funeral on TV, they said we're accompanying him to a wedding. Now, what's the output? Listen to this mother on TV. The son is the most handsome groom in the world, the most handsome groom in paradise. He is a father on TV. He wished to be accompanied to his wedding. He asked his father when he would get married like the other martyrs. Every week he told me, Dad, when will you accompany as a groom to my wedding? Will you accompany me to my wedding? Constantly on PATV, they're inputting, this is going to be your wedding. And this is a 16-year-old, 16-year-old boy. He's never been with a girl. He's in the strict Muslim Palestinian society. He's probably never even dated. And he wants to be a martyr and to get married. Uh, this is what he's dreaming about. Uh, and here's a mother who describes, again, this is, again, a 16-year-old boy. His only wish was to be accompanied to his wedding as a martyr. So we see the input and the output. The kids in Palestinian authority are completely poisoned by the hate messages of, of their leaders. Now, 14-year-old boy died as a terrorist, uh, as a martyr, January this year. Listen to what they played on TV during his funeral. نشاهد في هذا الفيديو هذا التشييع المهيب للطفل عمر الخمر 14 عاما Decorate me with roses my mother this is the most beautiful time This is what's shocking um, Palestinian TV is showing the face of a dead 14 year old boy at his funeral and they're saying this is the most beautiful time What you're seeing here are a whole series of horrific messages the Palestinian Authority is giving to their people. And people always focus on the school books, they focus on the text, they focus on the messages. What we're showing you here is that the messages are working. You have a Palestinian society that is literally poisoned by the message of Palestinian Authority, Palestinian children who are literally poisoned, good kids, good kids who are so convinced that Israel has no right to exist, that Israelis are monsters, uh, Israelis deserve to be killed, 
they want to die and get the dark-eyed virgins of paradise uh, accompanying it. We literally have a poisoned Palestinian generation. In, in 2007, I had a press conference in, in the Senate with Hillary Clinton, and when she uh, introduced me, she said that based on our meetings, whatever I'd shown her, the Palestinians are profoundly poisoning the minds of their children. Uh, that's, the, that's what she was warning about then, 2007. The international community has done nothing about it since then, and today we're seeing the fruits of that. Today we're seeing all those teenagers that you saw go out on terror attacks this year, who've died this year, 21 kids already who've died this year, uh, and many, many more who went on terror attacks and who were arrested, all because they've been poisoned successfully by the Palestinian Authority. Thank you very much, Itamar, for that uh, interesting and horrific uh, presentation. Uh, we have a number of questions um, for the, I believe we have 10 minutes uh, left. Um, we have a question here from Lisa Bernard. With the internet and other channels of information communication, is there any sign of critical thinking amongst Palestinian teens with access to European and other outside material? Is there sort of contraband like music videos and sports uh, seeping in? And I'll add to that, um, do, we, do you notice any sort of pushback against this narrative amongst Palestinian teens? Uh, most of the uh, internet sources that could fight against this are, are in English. Uh, and the average Palestinian child is not going to go and start searching around English websites uh, so that he's really a prisoner to the Arab language world. Um, these messages he's getting from Palestinian Authority from every different framework in society, from sports, from schools, to magazines, to summer camps. So uh, he, he's really... Uh, in, enveloped in these messages. Um, and so therefore it's very, very difficult to, re to really reach them. Uh, there are Palestinians who we're working with, Palestinian Media Watch is working with, that Palestinian uh, who met with a number of times together with the foreign members of parliament. And he describes his ability to lead because he was an expert in English. He started reading, he started meeting Israelis speaking in English. Uh, and that enabled him to have his wow moment when he realized that his whole life had been a lie. Everything he'd been taught by the PA had been a lie. He realized that Israelis were wanted to be wanted his life to be better than the Palestinian leadership cared about his life. So there are some Palestinians, uh, but there are unfortunately very few. And if there were more, we don't know because most of them are afraid to come out. They're afraid what would happen if they if they tell the the world that they really want peace with Israelis. Um, we have a question by Isaac Cohen, uh, basically brings up the age old question, unfortunately, or fortunately, Palestinians are so good in their uh, form of Hasbara full of lies, while Israel has always been delinquent in Hasbara uh, by allowing all these lies uh, to propagated. How can we turn things around? I, I know we only have seven minutes and probably this will take uh, seven hours, if not longer, but if you could maybe from your a particular viewpoint, vantage point, the fact that you are reading and watching these materials, you know, standing on one leg, as they say, what can you say the Israeli government should be doing? Well, I'll tell you what we're doing. We, we at BMW, we've started a, uh, a resolution, which we presented already to the seven members of seven different parliaments, as well as members of Congress. Um, it's a resolution whereby Congress and, and, and the parliaments will declare the Palestinian Authority child abusers for killing their own children, for sending their kids to go out and die for political purposes in order that Israel can be blamed. Um, and every MP that I've met with uh, over this period, I'm meeting uh, next week, I'll be in EU Parliament, also be in uh, Dutch Parliament. Um, everybody wants to do something about this. And we're hoping that the shaming we're, uh, we've tried and, and successfully we've cut off funding to the Palestinian Authority. We, we achieved the Taylor Force Act and, and so much more uh, was cut off to the PA because of what they're doing. Uh, but they don't care about going into debt. They just borrow more money and they give their, their, their workers 70% uh, or 80% of the salary. So we're trying something else. Uh, they, their whole point is to get PR. We want to shame them internationally. Our hope is that um, maybe this approach uh, maybe it'll shame both the PA as well as the governments who are funding them 
uh, once they have resolutions that the Palestinian Authority is child abusers, killing their own kids for political gain. The other thing we're doing is we're now working with, I mentioned the, the few Palestinians, but we're creating a, a, a website for Palestinians. It will be by Palestinians, for Palestinians. We're helping them to create it to where Palestinians can hide their faces and get their voices fixed, and they can all talk about the problems of the Palestinian Authority and how the children deserve a better world. Hopefully that'll be uh, up and running in a few months. Okay, I have a question here from Professor Daniel Pikes, president of Middle East Forum. He asks, why do you blame the international community rather than Israel? Uh, Israel is definitely to blame. Um, I've, uh, I presented once, in fact, I think it was at, a, at an event uh, together with Middle East Forum's uh, victory uh, uh, in the Knesset. And I, my point was that the Palestinian Authority um, has been uh, let off by Israel. Israel goes after terrorists, but they don't go after people who send the terrorists. They don't go after the top. And I think, uh, and I agree with you, Israel has made a terrible, terrible mistake by allowing this to continue. The Palestinian Authority is does everything that it should be declared a terrorist organization. Fatah should be declared a terrorist organization. And then a new leadership has to be created from other people. Uh, and anyone who's gonna be involved in terror has to be rejected. Israel's failed, Israel's failed its own people. Israel is thinking short-term, uh, short-term benefit. That is, uh, well, we know this enemy, we can deal with this enemy, or we're afraid of what's gonna happen when we put these guys in jail. It's a terrible mistake. We've been doing this since the beginning of the Oslo Accords. We, PMW has been reporting since 1996, 1997, that the whole work accords is a farce and the leadership should all be thrown in jail for promoting terror. Had that happened then, the history would have been very different. Unfortunately, it hasn't. Uh, and if we continue the same way and, and not blame Israel and not deal with the leadership, it's going to go another 20 years. Thank you. Following up from that, uh, Don Sable has brought up the point that you were involved in bringing the pay for slay program of the Palestinian Authority around, he says, six or seven years ago. I think it was less than that, if I'm correct. More than that. that more than that. Or more than that. Um, it, it, is that correct? And also, um, sort of follow up from that is, is it successful? Is the Israeli government, uh, you know, following through on what they themselves passed through the Knesset, and is it successful? Is it having an impact? Okay, so we actually discovered this in 2011, uh, in, in May. Uh, by June 2011, I was already presenting this in US Congress. Um, in July 2011, uh, Malcolm Holmline was already in Congress asking them to cut off funding uh, in the name of the Conference of Presidents, in the name of the Jewish organization. And from there, I went parliament to parliament in Europe. Uh, and there was tremendous pressure put on the Palestinian Authority. Uh, and to get back to uh, Professor Pipe's uh, argument here, or, or what he said a few minutes ago, so many countries told me that they would cut off funding, that they had to cut off funding to the Palestinian Authority because of what they're doing. And they said, except Israel is asking us to continue funding the Palestinian Authority. So this was a constant message. It didn't matter which prime minister Israel had, Israel felt the enemy who we know is better than than the unknown, and and this is and the terrorist we know is better than the the unknown, and and this is one of the tragedies. Uh, we went parliament to parliament. Eventually, the 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 great breakthrough. Well, we had it. By the way, Taylor Force was after four other parliaments that cut off funding. Dutch parliament had cut off funding. Canadian parliament uh, had cut off. Uh, Australian parliament had cut off all before uh, Taylor Force, uh, and then came Taylor Force, and then Israel followed. Uh, Israel deducts every month uh, from the tax money uh, the amount of the Palestinian Authority. Has it been effective? It hasn't been effective at all. It's been effective in one thing. We've convinced the international community that the Palestinian Authority is a terror-supporting organization that isn't worthy of getting international funding. That's what we've convinced them. Uh, and that's critical because that has taken the pressure off of Israel. The international community can, can say that Israel doesn't have a right to Judea and Samaria or Jerusalem, but no one is pressuring us anymore for withdrawals. Uh, and that's that's critical because the, the international community had wanted to create a situation whereby they would literally smother us with, with, with more and more withdrawals. So at least the pressure is off Israel. So I think in that sense, it was a, it was a major success. There's no pressure on Israel. Uh, but it hasn't stopped the Palestinian Authority from, from paying its terrorists. 
Thank you very much, Itamar. And with that, I think we've come to the end of the webinar. Itamar, I'd like to thank you again for your fascinating presentation. Uh, there was a question um, about whether we'll be able to see it afterwards. Uh, we usually put these things up on the uh, Middle East Forum um, YouTube channel, so you'll be able to uh, watch it again and share it around. Um, and for those who are interested, on Wednesday, 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, I'll be uh, doing my weekly roundup of what's going on in uh, the Israeli political scene on the Israel Insider webinar three, at, on Wednesday at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Thank you again, Itamar, and good night or good afternoon to everyone who's watching us from around the world. Thank you.